All right, this is Alistair Kroll, along with Sean Power. I am the co-author of a book called Complete Web Monitoring from O'Reilly. This is a quick look at something we call Communalytics, which was uh, first brought up at a Communalytics Boot Camp event at Web2 Expo New York, O'Reilly's technology event held there in November. Communalytics is the act of watching what people do in communities, figuring out how they spread messages, how they mobilize, and then tying that to business outcomes on your website. And those outcomes can vary, but every business has some kind of goal behind it. Uh, at a very simple level, things happen on the internet, searches, tweets, and so on. That drives some traffic to your site, and some of those people leave immediately. That's called bouncing. Some of those people stick around in their new users, and that's called growth. And over time, those visitors consume a number of pages on your site, spend some time, and hopefully eventually do something you want, which is buying or signing up or um, contributing content, something you'd like them to do. And this is the simplest possible model for web analytics. And it's normally expressed in the form of a funnel of people arriving at your site and then gradually seeing attrition as people leave until some percentage of the people who've come to your site convert to buyers, for example. We track this progress using things called KPIs or key performance indicators. So there might be an example of KPIs of bounce rate, meaning the people that came to your site and left immediately, or a KPI for conversion, the number of people that made it through the purchase process. And in addition to bounce rate, there are other metrics, KPIs for shopping cart abandonment or traffic volume or the rate of content creation. But whatever those things are, um, there are lots of things that happen before a visitor gets to the website. And so increasingly today, we can, we're concerned with what we call the long funnel, the funnel that starts far out on the internet in the form of search and email campaigns and so on. And the question here is, what should we track for communities? Because when we're talking about unpaid search, for example, we care about factors like your Google page rank or the percentage of people who click on a link and actually make it to your site. If you're doing banner advertising, you care about the cost of those ads and the percentage of people who click on them. If you're doing email, you care about open rate, opt-out rate, and so on. But it's still unclear what metrics we care about and what KPIs we should look at for communities. So we're going to take a stab at answering some of those questions. Now at a simple level, if you look at a social network like Twitter, you have a person and they have followers. So when that person says something, their message has a potential of reaching a certain number of people. It's not quite that simple, of course, because someone with fewer followers may have greater reach if their followers are themselves popular. For example, in this case, we've got two people, one with nine followers and a reach of nine, the other with only four followers, but a downstream reach of 16. Now, this is an oversimplification as well, because not everybody amplifies or repeats something someone says. So if I've got four followers, and those followers have a percentage chance of amplifying something I say by transmitting it on, then I have the initial four followers that hear my message, plus some number of downstream followers that hear it, for, in this case, a total of 8.4 reach. And the percentages by which someone decides to send the message downstream vary substantially. They vary based on how much they, they like what I say, how relevant it is to them, whether they saw it, of course, uh, how much they trust me, and so on. So a second person with more authority than myself might have a similar follower uh, social graph, but have different percentage chance of amplification. So in addition to those first four recipients of the message, they have another potential 11 people for a total of 15 people that receive the message. Of course, it's more complicated than this, because in addition to that first tier, I've got a second tier and a third tier, and so on downstream. And what we really care about when understanding the spread of a message and the power someone has to reach others on a particular topic is factors like their downstream reach, the total number of aggregate downstream followers, and the chance of amplification, how relevant it is that the content is something that person is going to amplify. This algorithm that we're kind of looking at here emerging in Twitter and other social networks strongly resembles Google's PageRank. PageRank is a, an algorithm that calculates the number of inbound links and their relevance to a topic to try and decide what is best as a resource for a particular subject. And if you think Twitter isn't focusing on this stuff, you just need to look at their rather ham-fisted implementation of retweets, uh, which Twitter's a smart company. They know perfectly well they shouldn't try and break something that's working. The only reason you would try to quantify and codify uh, an emergent property of a social network like retweeting is if you wanted to track it and, and understand how messages propagated, uh, which is what you'd need to do if you were trying to monetize that system. <coughs> so let's look a little at what a community might do. First of all, um, that community might uh, simply tell other people about a message for you. And if that message is particularly compelling, 
then it might tell that message to many other people, and at that point it becomes viral. And a viral message is simply something that when you hear it, you tell more than one person. Of course, your community might do other things. You might ask it to visit a particular site for you. And so you can mobilize a community to do something like visiting a site, or even spreading uh, the message and growing the size of the community by inviting other people. Different communities, different social graphs, are going to have different likelihood of an outcome. So, for example, depending on who gets the message, they may have a certain percentage chance of actually converting and doing something you want on the website, like buying something. And if you put all this together, we can start to define a funnel for communalytics that includes not only the on-site conversion, but also things like the number of people that saw the message, your reach or the impressions, for example, the number of people that initially sent the message out into the network, that would be your seed or starting community, the um, other people that have retweeted or amplified that message somehow become a fan of it, um, and then other, other uh, spread of that message into other communities, for example, someone seeing something on Reddit, moving it to Twitter. And there are different funnels for different communities and goals. So what we just looked at, um, if you were proposing a campaign, for example, that wanted to get a message out without a lot of money, you would focus on virality to make sure that the thing made its own gravy and kind of generated its own awareness. Um, on the other hand, if you were trying to spread a message from a few initial influential people, you need to convince influencers who are topic experts to spread the word. And if you cared more about the outcomes and conversions, for example, charitable donations, uh, you might want to focus on the impression to click ratio, the chances that someone will click with a clear call to action. We've done that for this for a few campaigns. For example, this is Beers for Canada. Uh, it was a campaign put on by Visible Government designed to actually generate um, donations and spread the word about student-generated code projects for government transparency. And we initially tweeted the message out to the world uh, with the help of about 20 influential Twitter users. Uh, then we tracked what happened over time and looked at the words and the discussions that emerged as the campaign spread over that day. And if you want to look at how it went, well, let's map that to one of these communalytics funnels. We had about 20 people as initial seeders of the message. Of course, those people have a substantial number of followers. That gives us a ratio of um, followers to seeders, which is a way of quantifying how prolific or how broadly distributed a message will be from your initial group. Uh, that message was propagated into two other networks, a uh, blog and an online uh, media site. Um, and so that's a form of repurposing. And we weren't very careful about how you manage this stuff, but using a variety of web platforms, you could look at repurposing and spread pretty easily. Now, the campaign was retweeted by about 150 people to around 2,000 new followers. So that's a, an amplification ratio of about 2.9. Um, percent, meaning that we've added 2.9 percent of the overall impressions from the initial group of followers. Um, of those people, about 1,600 1, visited the actual site, learned about Visible Government and the uh, project. That's a 0.23 percent uh, click-through rate, if you will, from the initial impressions that followers had. 32 of those people gave money, that's about a 2 percent conversion rate, and within that there were tiers of donation, and so we can actually calculate the revenues and the total outcome. And this kind of analysis, this kind of quantifiable data is something really compelling that a lot of community managers are struggling to provide the business. This is a great example of how to quantify communalytics uh, so we can stop focusing on group hugs and start focusing on counting hugs.